and welcome to Tech Law Talks. I am Anthony Diana, a member of Reed Smith's Tech and Data Group. In each episode of this podcast, we will discuss cutting edge issues on technology, data, and the law. We will provide practical observations on a wide variety of technology and data topics to give you quick and actionable tips to address the issues you are dealing with every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of our Reed Smith's Tech Law Talks podcast. In today's episode, we will discuss the legal challenges regarding use and operation of Jet GPT and similar other tools in Europe with a special focus on Germany. My name is Andy Spurtgerber. I'm a Reed Smith Tech and Data Partner in the Reed Smith Munich office. I have with me Michaela Westrup, our competition law partner, also in the Munich office, and Alexander Klett. He's our IP law partner, also in the Munich office. So hello from Germany. Everybody's talking about chat GPT and uh, similar tools at the moment. AI really got a push through chat GPT. My kids start doing their homework with this tool. Some people say our entire attorney profession is endangered. I personally don't see this risk yet, but um, definitely chat GPT and other tools will change the work life uh, of our profession and also the expectations of our clients. Looking a bit low closer from the legal angle, um, today we want to discuss and talk about legal risks in connection with operation of chat tools, um, AI-based chat tools, and also the use of such tools. What is easier than asking Chat GPT about those legal risks? We did this. So we asked Chat GPT, what are the legal challenges in Europe when using or operating Chat GPT? And the answer wasn't too bad. It wasn't like perfect, but it gives good direction. Here's a little excerpt of what we got. Chat GPT said, as an AI language model, ChatGPT is not subject to legal challenges in Europe in the same way that a human user or operator might be. However, there are several legal considerations that may be relevant when using or operating ChatGPT in Europe. And then the chat continues with listing data protection and privacy laws as one of the issues, continuous intellectual property rights, then legal uh, consideration in context of, of ethical considerations, and finally, liability issues. I think that's already quite a good summary of potential legal risks and topics. We have identified a couple of more, and yeah, want to dive into this. Starting with IP, Alex, what are the challenges from your IP law perspective? Thank you very much, Andy. And first of all, hello to everybody from my side as well. In the IP area, I would say the main part which is implicated by uh, chat GPT and really AI generally, when we're talking about generating text images or other works uh, through such tools, is copyright law. There may be some trademark issues as well, but the main area of concern is really copyright law. And this is the case on several levels or at several stages of the setup and use of such AI tools. Uh, namely, first of all, there can be copyright issues in training the AI. There will be copyright issues then in using the AI tool and then there can be copyright implications in various ways in connection with the output which is generated by AI. So chat GPT and other AI tools of a similar nature are meant to provide answers to questions or to requests from humans or to generate some other output which can be images, or even musical scores created by an AI tool. And in order to be able to do that, they need to be trained in order to function. Such training actually requires the use of pre-existing materials. And not surprisingly, these materials will often be subject to copyright protection. 
Such training with such protected materials will likely lead to reproductions during the training phase of the AI tool with respect to the material that's being used. And such reproductions would then constitute potential copyright infringement if the material used is actually a protected work, if it has not fallen into the public domain yet because the author is still alive or hasn't died more than 70 years ago. And finally, if there is no exception in copyright law allowing for such a use without the consent by the right holder. This last requirement, however, may be difficult to meet, uh, namely to find an exception which would work here. So consequently, companies developing and training AI tools have to be careful not to infringe copyright law by using protected works in training the tool. This will not be an issue, of course, if you use 19th century literature, music by Beethoven or artworks by Rembrandt, because all of those no longer enjoy copyright protection. Separately from the issues around training uh, the AI tool, there will be copyright law questions also in connection with using uh, the tool. So if a user actually uses protected text or images as part of a query which is submitted to chat GPT or a similar tool, this will raise the question whether the input alone is a reproduction which could lead to copyright infringement. There is no case law yet on the question whether the reproduction caused in this way could qualify as a reproduction for private purposes, which could be permitted as an exception under copyright law. However, we would recommend to remain cautious uh, for now in this regard, and it remains to be seen whether there will be guidance uh, on this point in the not too distant future. Once the tool has actually responded and created some output based on the input or query which was submitted by the user, it then needs to be reviewed whether the output by ChatGPT or another AI tool leads to copyright concerns. This could be the case in different ways. First of all, from the perspective of the entity operating the AI tool, there could be copyright liability if the response or output generated infringes protected works because the response or other output is arguably reproduced by the tool in the process of making it available to the user. Separately, if the user then goes ahead and makes use of the output generated by ChatGPT by either reproducing it further, making it available to others, or reciting it to an audience, the user may commit copyright infringement herself. Therefore, the user would be well advised to exercise caution in this context also and verify before going on to use the output generated whether any of this may infringe third-party copyright. As far as this output uh, of AI such as ChatGPT is concerned, the flip side of the coin, if you like, is actually the question whether the output as such can enjoy copyright protection. And if this was the case, who would enjoy these rights? However, in this context, it has to be noted that the output is obviously created by software and automatically so. And this is the entire uh, fun of it and the, the core issue around it technically. So it is not a creation by a human being. Therefore, the consensus seems to be that the output of an AI tool cannot be the object of copyright protection if it is truly fully 
generated by the software. This certainly seems to be the majority view in Germany, and it's our understanding that copyright systems in other countries don't view it differently either. The US Copyright Office, as an example, has already rejected copyright applications of such a nature with the argument that the output is not a human creation. Now, we don't have copyright offices in Europe, but in an enforcement scenario, a German court or other court in another country would likely have to come to the same conclusion. This may be disappointing if AI is used, for example, to generate uh, theoretical uh, posthumous works by composers, which has been done already, uh, or works of art uh, by artists, which they have never written or painted themselves, uh, but which follow their respective style. This is nice to have, but then the outcome, if it's not protected by copyright, can be used uh, by everybody because there would be no monopoly right. Where it becomes interesting is in what I would call mixed cases. Uh, so that would be situations in which a user obtains a certain output from chat GPT or another AI tool, which could be a part of a text he then prepares, so where you would essentially incorporate the output of the AI tool into a written piece that he or she would write themselves. In these situations, strictly speaking, only that part of the work which the author actually wrote herself would enjoy copyright protection, whereas all those parts of the piece which come from the AI tool would not be protected. What this will mean is that in actual scenarios of this kind, it could be difficult to actually draw the line, which can be a problem both for the user or a potential third party infringer and could lead to interesting discussions in infringement uh, scenarios and potential litigation when it comes to distinguishing between the AI output and the human creation. It will be very interesting to see, of course, how and how quickly there may be case law building around these copyright law questions, uh, both in Germany and beyond. From experience, I think we can say that such new technical developments tend to take some time before they lead to case law from the courts, but we will definitely stand by and watch what's going to happen in that context. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, that is that is really interesting. And uh, yeah, as you say, those mixed cases with you know pre-existing IP and AI generated content, those will be very interesting, and uh, we we expect case law on that. Reminds me a bit of um, the the when the peer-to-peer -peer music sharing applications back in our youth <laughs> came on the market, where uh, it doesn't mean if you can do something, it's also permitted to do it <laughs> under copyright law. Thanks, Alex. Really interesting. And we're, we keep the eyes open on the further developments on the IP side. Michaela, what, what are the aspects from, from the competition law side um, where you're the expert? Thanks a lot, Andy. Uh, great to be here. And hello to everyone. Well, when, when we discussed during this session, we, of course, I want, was interested in finding out what ChatGPT itself would be saying about uh, potential competition concerns under EU uh, law. And it, it basically came up with four main concerns. And I'm going to share this with you because it's kind of a nice way to enter the topic. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to spoil, but um, it's nice to see that our work will still be needed in the foreseeable future as it looks. On a dominant market position, uh, it says ChatGPT could be seen as having a dominant position in the market 
for natural language processing services, which could be a potential violation of EU competition law. Well, this is probably what I disagree with most because, first of all, it's probably the only service provider that says about itself to likely have a dominant position. So, um, yeah, there's definitely room here for, for our legal services and also having a dominant position in itself, even that, if that was the case, is not a problem. Uh, unless the companies um, would not obey to the stricter rules applicable to those companies uh, with a dominant market position. So this is probably what needs most of the correction here. But the second one relates to discrimination against competitors and their chat It could potentially discriminate against competitors by favoring its own services over those of competitors thereby making it difficult for them to compete on a level playing field. Well, that, that sounds quite like it's having a point. If they were to do that, yeah, that, that could be something that could be picked up uh, under EU competition law for sure. And then it says on exclusive contracts that ChatGPT could potentially enter into exclusive contracts with customers which could limit the ability of competitors to enter into the market and compete with ChatGPT. Yeah, that's a fair point too. Um, it could do that and exclusivity uh, by a service that could have for sure that effect. And then its last point was on price fixing. ChatGPT could potentially engage in price fixing by setting prices for its services at a level that would make it difficult for competitors to enter the market and compete with ChatGPT. That's probably, I'd say, less of a concern. Uh, if it comes to price fixing, there is more horizontal issues that are likely to be considered problematic. But it's uh, depending on the market power, this may be an issue as well. So yeah, ChatGPT is not completely off with these observations, but from my perspective, uh, what, what will be most relevant in relation to these language model services is, is dominance and exclusivity concerns that are clearly related to market power and the ability to leverage this market power into new fields. And, and the problem in this market is really that it is highly opaque how to create the relevant value. So if looking at the value creation chain, you will see that two main inputs will be required that are really bring in restraints to companies that look to enter the market. The one is enormous computational performance capabilities connected most likely to cloud service capabilities and at high capacities. And the second is, since the actual training of the AI obviously uh, requires access to huge amounts of data, this is likely to be the biggest holdback. It's, it's likely that access to data will really be determining about the quality of the results that AI will generate. And guess who's having access to the largest and most relevant data today? Yeah, probably likely to be the big internet giants, the companies that are already providing services in the internet uh, to a large scale, thereby generating uh, large volumes of data or being able to access them. In other words, what regulators around the globe, it's not a European issue at all, will likely have to consider is how to avoid that the existing access to big data by the big tech companies uh, will sort of safeguard their gatekeeper position by leaving them in the pole position for the best functioning AI in uh, relation to language models. This is what is meant by the term self-reinforcement, but the way I see it, given the enormous relevance of these services to basically 
any sector dealing with people and customers as it revolutionizes the way humans and I will you know, connect and communicate. There is such a huge upside to that and such a huge relevant um, to basically any market that this takes the re self-reinforcement concern to the next level. Yeah, regulators will need to shape up their existing rules that, that already look into this issue regarding interconnectivity, interoperability, and what fair terms are uh, regarding access to data in order to prevent um, harm to competition on the basis of this self-reinforcing effect. So yeah, this, uh, these are my main thoughts from a competition perspective, and I'm handing over to you, Andy. Yeah, thanks. Also really interesting aspects, and uh, let's see if any of this situation will, will still find its way into the European Data Act or interpretation of the Digital Market Act. So there is definitely uh, touch points that can be seen. For other points um, attaching to these data aspects, um, we the other legal aspects we see with uh, Jet GPT and other AI applications is like the data protection. So not just purely any data, but the data protection, data privacy issues that come with this solution. It's uh, like um, in the copyright area, as Alex explained, you can structure also um, the training, the using and the output. Um, in all of these situations, you can have personal data, so data that um, identifies individuals and where the operator of the system must comply with applicable data protection rules. In Europe, for example, if the data is collected uh, from European users, then uh, likely GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, will apply. So uh, this is this is an area that is relevant for the operator, and same with the copyright for the users. Any personal data that is contained in the output of um, this AI system will also be subject to the data protection rules um, applicable at the location of the user. So. If a German user uses JetGPT, gets personal data in the reply, uses this reply for their presentation or whatever a work product in Europe, then this user has to comply with GDPR. And that, that definitely will be an issue because uh, likely there, there is a lack of a justification to do so. So we have data protection. We also have general liability issues or liability questions for like who's liable for the content if something is wrong or like Alex um, said, if there is an IP infringement, is is the the system, is ChatGPT or the operator liable or is the user liable? There will be case law as well. Generally, of course, um, the operator, like any other information provider platform, is liable to a certain extent for the information that is provided. JetGPT have in their terms and conditions a very, very wide US law um, limitation or exclusion of liability. Uh, that is likely not enforceable in Europe, at least with uh, European end users, customers or consumer customers. B2B, it could be uh, enforceable. But apart from this, there is this special situation that the user inputs a question or some sort of content and then jet gpt reacts and this is kind of like the old rule bad question bad output so there is also quite a good argument to rely on say well if you give a good input you'll get a good result so that can also affect liability questions on this end, also, if you look at the ChatGPT website, um, you get like in the in the general marketing slogan already, like excuses um, that the bot or the technology might also correct itself, and that this is kind of like part of the chatting function. So there are some special nuances of uh, liability questions. What other legal aspects do we have? Likely, the 
are not two huge legal aspects in the area of digital services acts or other social media related questions. Yes, perhaps on hate speech, that sort. That's also what JetGPT self-identified. There are definitely transparency requirements under the upcoming AI Act, uh, which requires AI systems to be transparent that AI is working. And also depending on, on the intensity of the AI, the transparency goes a bit further. One final aspect, an, an interesting one, is on the employment law. What about if employees use JetGPT for their work product and instead of uh, working for eight hours, they do this in five minutes and then go to the beach? Uh, are there any consequences under employment law if the work product is okay? So these are, of course, side questions, but interesting ones. And I'm sure we'll have uh, cases on this end as well. I think these are most of the legal aspects most important legal aspects in connection with operating jet gpt or similar technologies and also using them handing over to michaela and alex for some closing comments thanks andy um of course well i i just think that given the relevance of the topic this will not be the last time we'll be talking about this from a competition side i can only say everybody who's in the active in, in the digital markets needs to be aware of these developments and and where the law uh, and the case uh, practice will develop to. So we for sure will keep an eye on that. I'm so happy to continue this discussion with you guys. So thanks for having me. It'd be great. Yes, and thank you from my side as well. From an IP angle, we will certainly monitor case law developments and also uh, legislative efforts which we may see. And I also think this will be a topic which will be with us for a while. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. So yeah, let's let uh, take away. Don't just offer because the technology is cool. Yeah, um, have a look also at the legal aspects and don't just use um, because the technology is available. Also have a look at the legal aspects. This was today's episode of our Reed Smith Tech Law Talk podcast. We thank you very much for listening. Please leave feedback and comments in the comments fields or send us an email. We hope to welcome you soon for our next episode. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Tech Law Talks is a Reed Smith production. Our producer is Ali McArdle. For more information about Reed Smith's tech and data practice, please email techlawtalks at reedsmith.com. You can find our podcasts on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and reedsmith.com. And our social media accounts at Reed Smith LLP on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. This podcast is provided for educational purposes. It does not constitute legal advice and is not intended to establish an attorney-client relationship, nor is it intended to suggest or establish standards of care applicable to particular lawyers in any given situation. Prior results do not guarantee a similar outcome. Any views, opinions, or comments made by any external guest speaker are not to be attributed to Reed Smith LLP or its individual lawyers. All rights reserved.